Hi, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Gorski again, and I'm going to try to talk about two lessons um, in investigations with just this one lesson. So instead of looking at me, you're going to be looking at my, cons my computer screen, and as you can see, my little arrow is moving a bit. So I'm going to be teaching you some things about the hundreds chart in itself. And then we're also going to talk about a game called Guess My Number. And we're going to use the hundreds chart in order to help us solve for an unknown number. But first, before we get started, um, let's talk about how important really a hundreds chart is, especially in second grade. Now you use the hundreds chart a lot in first with your math, but in second, we use it a lot when it comes to computation with adding and subtracting. Um, we could skip count on our hundreds chart. We can add and subtract on our hundreds chart. So it's so important in second grade that this tool is used. And it's a great tool that we use with games as well. So when we use our hundreds chart, we're looking at our hundreds chart, we're starting with the number one and it goes all the way to 100. Now, when we play the game called Guess My Number, Guess My Number means that one person is going to choose a number where no one else knows what that number is. But we can't sit and ask the same questions over and over. Like, is your number an 18? Or is your number a 43? Is your number a 77? We just can't ask those random questions. We have to ask better questions in order to get to the number that is unknown. So in this case, I'm going to talk about a particular number. I'm going to say the number 47, okay? Now, I'm telling you what that number is because I'm going to start talking about different kind of questioning strategies in order to help you eliminate or take away a lot of numbers on our hundreds chart. So, the first thing is, and I always tell my second graders, especially last year, because they got to love to play this game, Guess My Number. Um, and we would play a couple rounds of it because the better you get at your questioning strategies, the better and the faster you're going to figure out what that number is. So as I said, we're just going to talk about the number 47. So the first question I always tell my kids to say or to ask, is, is your number even or odd? Now, you remember when we were in first grade, we have two cute little rhymes, even Steven and odd Bob. So the even Steven rhyme would go, even Stevens are so great, they end in numbers zero, two, four, six, or eight. Odd bobs are so fine, they end in numbers one, three, five, seven, and nine. So if I told you that the number is 47, would it be even or odd? Remember, evens end in zero, two, four, six, or eight, and the odd numbers end in one, three, five, seven, or nine. Since my number is a 47, it is going to be odd. So that means. I'm going to take my hundreds chart. I'm going to pick a color. For example, I'm just going to pick purple. And since my number is odd, that means I am going to take away every even number. So that means I'm going to take away the column that has all the twos, the column that has all the fours, the column with all the sixes, eights, and zeros, because that's like your tens column there. You're skip counting by tens in this particular one. Now look, since I said, is my number even versus odd, that pretty much wipes out half of my column here, or half of my chart. So the next thing I would say 
talking about words greater than, less than. So remember, the number is 47. Maybe somebody could ask me, is my number greater than 40? If my number is 47, I would say, yes, it's greater than 40. It's bigger. It's more. So what does that tell me to do now? That tells me to take out any number that now is less than 40. Because I asked if the number was greater than 40. Let me make a correction here. There you go. So now it's dwindling down. I'm getting more colors in my chart. So now I have to ask another question. Is my number greater than, I could say 67. Well, since we know our number is 47, I'm gonna say, no, it's not greater than 67. So that means now I'm gonna take away and eliminate all these numbers down here now that are greater than 67 because of how I'm questioning it. So now look at all these numbers in white. These are now numbers that could potentially be that answer. Well, we still know it's 47. So now we have to think about another question type. Maybe I could ask, talk about tens place versus ones place. Tens place is to our left, ones place is to our right. I could maybe ask, is there a five in the ones place? Hmm, no, because our number is 47. So I'm gonna take out anything that has a five in the ones place. Let's think about another question. Does your number have a four in the tens place? Does it have a four as a starter? Yes, it does. So what does that tell me to do? I'm going to take out everything that has, that does not have a four in the tens place. So now I'm to these four white numbers left. So now you're at a point where you could say, oh, well, is your number 43? No, it's not 43. We click that off. Is your number 49? No. Well, I eliminate that one. So now you're down to 41 and 47. Well, we know our number is 47. Okay. So we know that's our big number here. But you have to see all those questions that I used. I really didn't use many questions in order to figure out what my number was. But that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to use even or odd, tens place, ones place, greater than, less than, in order to help you figure it out. So I'm going to come back with another video, and maybe I might have an assistant here to help me so we can work together to show you how the game is played with more than one player. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. I will talk to you all soon. Have a great day.